Hi, I'm Jeff Schaefer, and today we're going to take a look at how to make turns the correct way. Uh, we're using a 172, a Cessna 172, and this is X-Plane 11. So currently I'm cruising at 7,500 feet. I'm maintaining altitude, constant power setting, I mean basic straight and level flight. And if we want to go anywhere other than straight ahead, we're going to have to make a turn. So to start off with, what is a turn basically? Well, it's banking the airplane. And when you bank the airplane, the lift that's produced by the wings is still being used to lift the airplane, but some of it is being used to pull the airplane around the turn. This is called the horizontal component of lift. That's the lift used to pull the airplane around the turn. The lift used to keep the airplane flying, or pull the airplane up, is the vertical component of lift. This is important to know because when you make a turn, you can lose altitude because you're reducing the vertical component of lift. You're, you're trading some of it into horizontal lift. So when we make a turn, in order to not lose altitude, we need to pull back on the yoke a little bit during the turn. So I'm going to make this turn again from the outside, and I want you to watch the elevator on the back of the plane, and you'll see it lift up a little bit as I pull back on the yoke when the turn gets a little bit steeper. Here we go, we're going to turn to the right this time. It's very subtle, it is hard to see, but I'm pulling back on that elevator as we make this turn. See the elevator moving there just a little bit. So to keep it up here on the horizon, I have to pull back. If I just let go, it drops right down. Pull back back up on the horizon. So the back pressure that you need to use in a turn, pulling back, as you might have guessed, is proportional to how steep the turn is. So if you're making a turn with a very gentle bank of say 10 degrees, and 10 degrees on the attitude indicator is this mark here, then you're not going to need much elevator at all. You will need a little tiny bit. There's a 10 degree bank right there. You can roll over to a 20 degree bank, and you need more elevator, I would say a noticeable amount. You go over to this mark, this is 30 degrees of bank, and you need quite a bit more elevator to stay on the horizon. Now all the way down here, this is 60 degrees of bank, and right in between the 30 and the 60 is 45 degrees of bank. So 45 degrees of bank is right here, right in between the 30 and the 60. And that's a lot of back pressure. And 60, of course, is just a, a ton of back pressure. You can see we're really just pulling all the way around and we're entering an accelerated stall, in fact, as we're pulling back so hard. That was what that horn was. So let's level out here and get back on our altitude. So there's another important part to turning, and it's rudder usage. What happens when you turn, there's an effect called adverse yaw. When you're making a turn, you need to lift up a wing and lower a wing. The wing that's being lifted up has to have the aileron on that wing lower it. So watch the ailerons. I'm going to make this turn fairly briskly. And you'll see the aileron on the right side will lower and the aileron on the left side will raise. So the lowered aileron is creating more lift to lift the wing and the raised aileron 
is reducing the lift so that the wind goes down. So watch them as I turn now. And watch them again as I roll out. It'll be the opposite. So what happens when that aileron is raised and lowered? Well, the aileron that's raised isn't creating a negative lift. It's just reducing lift. The aileron that's lowered is increasing lift. Well, there's a type of drag called induced drag that comes with lift. And when you have induced drag on one side and less induced drag on the other side, you create what's called adverse yaw, which has the effect of pulling the airplane to the side, let's say laterally. So if you watch when I make this turn again, I'm not going to use any rudder, and you're going to see really by looking at the tail, you'll be able to see that the whole airplane is kind of skewing off to the side. So I'm going to roll to the left and watch that the airplane will skew to the right just a little bit. You see that? Did you see how the tail kind of swung to the, to the left side because the whole airplane was skewing to the right? And again, when I roll out, you'll see the opposite. So that force, that skewing to the side, that adverse yaw, that represents a side blade. It's just like in a car, if you're going around a turn, you would feel that in the plane. You would feel yourself pulled to one side. Well, in an airplane, we don't ever have to feel that because we can use the rudder to correct for that and always feel like we're just sitting straight ahead. So in this case, I'm going to make this turn again, and I'm going to use the rudder to try to keep that that nose from shifting left to right. And this is something that is a lot easier to do in a real airplane than it is in the simulator, just because of the range of motion and the lack of the actual feeling uh, that you get when you have adverse yaw in the plane. But here we go. We're going to roll left. And using just a little bit of rudder. You see, I didn't do it perfect. It skewed off a little bit. Now we're going to roll out of it. If anything, I'm using too much rudder there. But you can see it's different from the first time, where it just freely skewed off to the side. So again, here's it. The nose kicks out to the right, and then it kind of wavers back and forth. Coming back, the nose kicks out to the left. The nose is always kicking out or having adverse yaw in the opposite direction of the turn. And here it is again with rudder. And again, that was too much rudder. Okay, let's try this again. And there I used just the slightest amount of rudder to keep it. Like I said, in the simulator, it's not easy to practice, but you'd be better off practicing it and using too much rudder every time than just making turns with the bank only, with the aileron only, and not building the correct habit. So I would strongly encourage you to practice this, and, and if, you know, if you make a turn that was called a skidding turn, where you're using too much rudder, that's okay. You know, let yourself off the hook for that one, because... Again, the, the habit is the most important part here. Um, you know, truth be told, in a 172, you could never use the rudder, and you'd be able to fly it just fine. The whole point of learning the rudder is to be proficient and have the right habits when you move on to larger and more complex aircraft. So let's try it one more time. Not too bad. Uh, let me show you the other place where you can see the adverse yaw, because you're not always going to be flying from the outside view, and it's the inclinometer. So the inclinometer is this little ball, also commonly called the ball. And the simplest way to deal with the inclinometer is to remember the phrase, step on the ball. So I'm going to roll to the left sharply. I'm not going to use the rudder, and you're going to see the ball's going to roll to the left side just a little bit. 
See it there? And then once I'm in the turret, it's going to center back up. Now you'll notice the ball rolled off to the left, and the, the phrase is step on the ball. So if I had used left rudder during that turn, the ball would have been centered. We're going to roll back out, you're going to see the ball roll up to the right. There you go, just a little bit. Now that ball is nothing more than just a ball in a tube. So whatever the ball experience is, whichever side it's being pulled to, that's the way your body's going to be pulled in the airplane as well. So if we roll to the left, the nose gets kicked off to the right. The ball rolls to the left because you're supposed to be using left rudder to correct. So watch me roll to the left. Watch the nose. See if you can see it kick out to the right a little bit as the turn begins. See, and then it kind of swings back to the left. It's a little bit of a subtle motion to get used to. So this is with rudder coming back out. Now let's try stepping on the ball. So I'm going to do another brisk roll, but I'm going to try to step on the ball and get it centered during the bank. There you go, and just, just a little bit. Didn't quite get it. Like I said, the feel in the simulator, especially depending on uh, what kind of yoke or joystick you're using, can really make it hard to, to get that correct. So, um, do practice, but don't expect to really have coordinated flight like you would in a real airplane. Just try to do the best you can each time with that. Now let's talk about rolling out of a turn. And again, I'm off my altitude, but that's okay. We're going to work our way back up. And when you're rolling out of a turn, let's say we're going to turn to 030, which is right here, and I have the heading bug already marked there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn there, and when I get to 030, I'm going to start rolling out of the turn. There's 030. And you can see we ended up to the left of the heading we wanted. That's because we need to lead the rollout. We need to start rolling out before we reach the desired heading. So in this case, let's, uh, let's move that heading bug. And let's say we want to turn to face east. So I'm going to start my turn. lead the roll out and I ended up right on east. Now how did I do that? How did I get it to end up right on that east he easterly heading there that we marked? It's not some kind of uh, a feel I have for the plane, although maybe that helps a little, I don't know. But it's really because of a simple rule. Lead your roll out with half of your bank angle. So I'm going to show this to you. The heading is set to north. On the way to north, we're going to use a 30 degree bank. Half of our 30 degree bank is 15 degrees. So we're going to lead our rollout at, by 15 degrees. That means here's north, 30 degrees from north, 15 degrees from north is right here, right in the middle between north, the N and the 3, between north and 30. As soon as we're right in the middle there, I'm going to start rolling out of the turn, and you'll see we'll end up right on north. We're at a 30 degree bank. There's 15 degrees, I'm starting my roll out. There you go, right about on north, maybe two degrees off. So you can see this rule of thumb is, is really, really very good. It works very well in all cases. So if we were gonna roll back to say 060, and we were gonna use 10 degrees of bank, it's just a little bit. You're only leading the turn, the rollout by five degrees because this is a very, very slow turn. There's five degrees.
And there you go, we rolled out right on our heading. Conversely, let's say we want to roll all the way around to west. And we want to use a steep bank angle. Let's do this one all the way at 45 degrees. Half of 45 degrees is about 22 degrees. So we're going to leave this by 22 degrees. So just right in here. Right? Right between the little tick mark and the larger tick mark here, which represents 290. So, you know, approximately 292 degrees. Here we go. There's our rollout. And there we are, right on our heading. So always lead your rollout like that. That can become a habit where you can just start sort of sensing when you're supposed to roll out. But use that rule of thumb every time you turn and it's gonna be a big help. Now, speaking of habits, there's another very important habit to build when you're making turns. And I would do this in the simulator so that you have the habit in the real airplane as well. And that is looking before you turn. So in a low wing airplane, you're generally gonna just turn and look and it'll be fine. You know, your, your head will naturally sort of wanna look where you're going. But in a high wing airplane, you can't really see when you're in a turn, can you? So in a high wing airplane, what you're going to want to do is, before you make a turn, so let's say we're making a turn to the left, we're going to roll to the right just a little bit, lifting the left wing so we can take a look, and then start our turn to the left. Now we're coming around the turn, and we don't really have to look to the right to roll out. Uh, you know, even though that's sort of the opposite, you know, everything else we do, we're sort of undoing it on the way out, but in this case you don't have to because you're not turning to the right, you're just rolling out back to uh, straight and level. There we are. Roll back out. And now we're going to start a turn to the right. So before we start the turn, I'm going to lift the right wing, take a look, and start a turn to the right. And the whole point here is to look for traffic, uh, but it could also be, you know, to look for a mountaintop you forgot about, a radio tower, uh, maybe even just a whole bunch of birds that you don't want to run into. So build that habit, build that habit early. Don't put it off, start it right now because that is a, a difficult habit to pick back up if you don't have it and it's very important. It would be very easy for another airplane to be flying right alongside you and could even be right above your wing there. And if you start that turn, you're gonna roll right into them. One more note about turns. I'm sure this is pretty obvious to most people, uh, but if you're relatively new to flying or new to the simulator, when you make a turn, you're only banking into the turn, or rolling into the turn, I should say, with the yoke until you get there. And then the yoke is neutral. See that? The yoke is, I mean, it's roughly level here, and we're staying in the turn. To get out of the turn, we're rolling away from the direction of the turn. And now we're back to level. So watch again, we're rolling into a turn, using that aileron. And then it's roughly level, or neutral. And then rolling back out. And that's it for turns. You know, make some, take some time and, and practice your turns in the simulator. And uh, make sure you can you can do these things naturally. You know, when you roll into a turn, you should naturally want to put a little bit of rudder and pull back on the yoke. 
and you'll start to get a feel for it. Uh, when you're making turns, you know, one question I get a lot is how, how steep of a bank should I be using in a turn? And when you're VFR, you're flying around, it's it's really your discretion. If you're making a, a turn all the way around, there's something called a medium bank turn, which is somewhere in the like 20 to 40 degree range. You know, this would be a little bit on the steeper end. This 20, you know, maybe a little over 20 there. That's a little on the shallow end, so somewhere in the range of 30 degrees is, is what most people do for just sort of a normal VFR turn. Now, if I'm turning just a few degrees, you know, I'm just going from here over to north, you know, just you maybe only need 10 degrees of bank because you're not really turning very far. You don't need this big dramatic motion. And the other thing I'll say about it is when you're flying VFR, meaning you're looking outside, try not to always focus on the heading so much and say, oh, well, we're turning to the north exactly or 030 exactly. Uh, if you're, especially if you're maneuvering and you're not really on a cross country or you're headed anywhere, sometimes it's good to just think about it in terms of, okay, I'm heading to this landmark over here, you know, which there isn't one, but uh, let's say I'm turning towards that intersection, you know. So you would just make your medium bank turn over towards that intersection. And the, the point of that is to keep your head outside the cockpit looking for other traffic and focusing on flying by using the horizon and not always focus so much on, on the DG and the exact heading. See that? So there, we're, we're headed to that landmark there. Um, you know, that's another important part too. And you know, always be thinking about how can you raise your situational awareness and one way is to focus to the outside when you're making your turns and things like that. Uh, even on a cross country if you're using a, an exact heading, you know, say you're flying exactly 300 as I'm where I'm almost at here. Um, it's still very helpful to choose something outside. I have no idea what's going on with the graphics there, but choose something outside as a landmark to fly to. So this is pretty sparse here. I'm out in Wyoming, but I see some power lines. See, there's, there's kind of two towers next to each other. So that wouldn't be a bad landmark to say, well, I'm headed for this one next to the two towers that are close together. And I kind of have this picture of this mountain here too. So I can sort of keep them in view, keep them in sight, and head towards those things while keeping my heading. And that keeps my head out here focused on the outside and not so much focused on the inside. So practice those turns. I'm Jeff Schaefer. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe on this video and you'll see more uh, lessons like this and, and more bits of training and advice on how to become a better pilot. Thanks.